Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Now to be reconciled means to be brought back together or to be restored to favor with God. Sin causes a great divide between us and God. It's like, it's like an Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom and that scene with the rope bridge across the chasm. Can we roll that clip? Oh, we don't. We don't. No, we can't. No, there's, no, there's no clip. There's no clip. Okay. I'm afraid I'm not much of an artist, but I suppose I can draw it real quick. Okay. There we go. Uh, so this is the scene, right? You've got Indiana Jones on the one side with short round and that lounge singer. And there's this great chasm in between them and the other people. And these people can't get to the other side because Indiana Jones cut the bridge and they can't make it to the other side. Oh yeah. I forgot. There are crocodiles on the bottom. Crocodiles, that's better representation. See, there's no way for them to cross from the one side to the other side because of this sin. And the crocodiles really help us understand, you know, the severity of our sin. When Paul says, be reconciled to God, we have to understand that's no easy task. In fact, it's impossible for us because it's not just the actual sins that we commit. If it were, it would be simple. Just stop sinning and be reconciled to God. But it's not simple at all. It's very deep. You see, theoretically, even if we could simply stop sinning, it wouldn't get us from here to here. Our sin is just too great. So what's the solution? Well, if we're looking to ourselves for the solution, we are going to fall short every time. Instead, Paul tells us, for our sake, he, that is God the Father, made him, Christ Jesus, to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him, Christ Jesus, we might become the righteousness of God. Okay. That's huge. So let's break this down. God the Father sends his son Jesus, who is God in the flesh. At his transfiguration, by the way, we see that his, his body, in his body, he possesses all the power and glory of God himself. And what does he choose to do with that power and glory? He goes to the cross. Even though he himself has no sin, upon that cross, he became sin for you. And it was there that he paid the price for your sins. It was there on the cross where God's wrath was poured out against your sin, where his anger was quenched. It was there where Jesus endured death and hell for you. But that's not all, because Paul says that in Christ Jesus, we have become the righteousness of God. Jesus has taken our place. He has exchanged our sinfulness for his righteousness, which means he has reconciled us to God. In Christ, your relationship with God has been restored fully and completely. 